Hey everyone, welcome back to another Patty's Lab video. Today I'm gonna show you how I made this Japanese inspired tactical reloading system for toilet paper without using one of those shitty overhead covers. Enjoy watching. So please keep watching because I will explain all the pitfalls and I will explain how to make this work the way I intended it. I also included uh, separate ones that can be spread apart as far as you want. So to house kitchen towel rolls instead of only toilet paper or maybe you have wider toilet paper. So keep watching because I'll explain each version that I have. And I also included a uh, one-to-one uh, draw template so you can make this out of wood without the help of a printer. Also included step files so the CNC fans out there can make this uh, with their CNC machines. What is really important is the way that these um, lips, these arms are designed, that they basically, because of their kind of squarish nature, they will prevent the roll from rolling uh, too much whenever it's loaded in. So you can pull on it, but it will stop rolling. And that's really uh, convenient, of course, because you don't want the, all the toilet paper to, to fall onto the floor whenever you pull uh, a little bit. And you can still rip a piece off so that works uh, just fine without the cover. Here you can see all the different models that I will upload uh, into the zip file that I upload to Colts 3D. And it will contain the text quick reload and tactical reload on top. And you can either choose for the honeycomb design or a plain design. And even the plain design is hollow from the inside, so you still save material. But if you want to go for the honeycomb design, I recommend you to watch the next section uh, really closely because it will explain how to tackle that problem because it's quite tricky to print. Also, if you don't want to go through the hassle to align both of these uh, uh, towers separately, then you can choose for a fixed 100 millimeter and 105 millimeter uh, width. I will also include a plain model with, which is completely uh, filled from the inside. So it's literally a block with two pins sticking out and that's for using in CNC work. So you can load in the step file in Fusion and then add some things you want and then CNC it that way. And I will also include a PDF for if you want to do this by hand with a scroll saw or something like that. So that will contain one-to-one -one drawings so you can make it yourself at home without using a 3D printer or a CNC machine. So now let's move over to the next section and that will explain how to tackle the problem with the um, honeycomb design. So please keep watching. I loaded in the, the two towers and as you can see, I kind of pushed one a little bit through the build plate. And the reason why I did this, I mean, initially I wanted to give you just the settings that I used, but I switched filament brands and now the print uh, doesn't turn out too great. And I will explain why this is really tricky to print. And if you don't want to go through the hassle of doing this, you can of course use the um, solid wall uh, models that don't require any uh, fancy tweaking to get the fancy shapes to work. And they are also hollow from the inside, so you save material anyway. But I will show you what is the problem with these uh, honeycombs. So whenever the uh, printer is done printing one of those rising stems, you get to these overhang parts. And what is basically happening, the hot plastic here is cooling down and I will include an image on screen what is actually happening. It's pulling up the sides and that will create a snag point for the printer whenever it moves from one uh, location to the other. So I tried to implement Z-hops and that kind of worked. So the printer is Z-hopping from one tower to the next one instead of like snagging on those edges. I also tried to increase the print temperature and this of course could uh, worsen the effect of the warping but I tried to, um, to basically let the printer flatten out this bit a little bit and I also cranked the fan up to 100% in combination with uh, slow outer and inner wall speed. So these are the settings I tried to make this work and it kind of worked 
but it was also film independent and of course your printer might might have different uh, fans and different cooling flow so really advise you to only print one model lower it down into the platform and try to get your printer settings dialed in for these uh, hexagon shapes that said um, we can move now on to the easier printed parts and these are the uh, two pegs that you press into the uh, main body into these holes right here to in order to lock the uh, moving arms into place and I will show you the pegs and the arms uh, in the next clip. I loaded in one of these pegs and one of these arms and you need of course to print two of each because they are a pair and um, the only thing that is really important for printing these parts is just use a 100% infill. You need a sufficient mass on one side of the hinge for them to fall down. So if they are in the up position, you want all your mass on the left side of the hinge so they can fall down and then on the right side of the hinge on the other side. Because if you don't do that, then they probably will stay uh, upright. I will now show you the PDF with the drawings so you can make them by hand if you want to. So let's move over to that. This is the drawing that I will also include into the zip file that I will upload to colds3d.com. This is a one-to-one -one scale uh, printout so make sure you print it at 100% scale because a lot of programs try to uh, fit the images to the paper and then you will end up with maybe 97% scale instead of 100. That's why I added this sentence here. I want to encourage you to use this uh, to make your own parts if you don't have a printer. And that's why I kept everything really simple. I added the center marks, so you could just use a center punch to take over the holes, copy them. Added dimensions, and a few of them look really uh, weird, but that's the way I, I designed this. So, uh, yeah, live with that. <laughs> and make sure that you cut out these sections right here, so that the mass distribution is heavily towards one side, and that will make them... Uh, be able to fall close. That's the uh, the only things I have to mention. So now we're gonna watch the time lapse. So enjoy the time lapse of the parts being printed. These are two very important parts for uh, the um, toilet paper holder. The way they work, since they have kind of sharp edges and there is a small fillet in the CAD model, but still due to the nature of their printing, they can develop a small uh, burr on one side. Because of the sharp nature, they basically um, prevent the roll from rolling uh, on its own so whenever you pull on it it will basically stop if it was really round then the roll would keep on rolling and then you need indeed the cover that you see on many commercial ones but i decided to go without the cover because i don't like that so that's why it's really important that you uh, sand or use a deburring tool these edges where the roll is rolling on just so much that you like the friction that they create. So if you overdo it, then the roll will probably roll too much. And if you underdo it, then the roll will probably not roll uh, the desired way. And the same holds for these holes. So you just have to deburr them a little bit on both sides to make sure that they are operating smooth. That's the only remark that I have regarding these. So now let's move to the main model. Um, this is how the main model turned out and it looks pretty nice. And then you have these packs that you press fit into here to lock the arm into place. You might want to sand them a little bit so they fit a little bit snug or add a little bit of glue. That's up to you of course. But I saw that the printer had layer shifted right here. And that could be, of course, the case that my print head is much too heavy for the setup that I use. But um, 
I mean, I didn't have this happening to the part that I showed you in the introduction, so this could be a one-off uh, accident. And here you can see the snagging, so it's basically broken. And I have a little bit of stringing, but for the rest of the part looks uh, looks pretty cool, and this is the quick reload one. Of course, you could choose the tactical reload as well. Thank you for watching, if you made it this far, and remember, you don't have an excuse any longer to leave an empty roll hanging. See you in my next video.